Welcome to another episode of today's conversation on leadership powered by Life University. I'm your host, Dr. Jill Lamarche, and I'm thrilled today to have with me Dr. Peter Morgan. Dr. Morgan is a 1985 graduate of New York Chiropractic College, and he really found his calling when he didn't know what he was looking for. But what I really want to talk with him about today is that in 2002, he founded an organization called Cairo Missions, which has led to the evolution of Mission Life International, Birthing Center, all sorts of good things happening in Haiti. Uh, Dr. Morgan, thanks so much for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. So why don't you share with our audience, you know, what prompted you? Obviously, you went into practice when you graduated from chiropractic college, and then you were prompted to start Cairo Missions. And then that has led you to developing uh, Mission Life International. And I want our audience to understand all this fantastic work that you've been doing now for over two decades. Well, it's interesting because um, you, your your program is about leadership. So uh, it started like that. It started uh, really when I first graduated chiropractic college and I went to become a uh, uh, a member of my state organization. So the first thing started for me in leadership was just being a member of my chiropractic organization. And over time, I took on different roles. I became the district president, which I'm still a district president of Manhattan. I'm on the board 30 years now. Uh, I became the uh, I became the uh, on the executive board. I became the vice president, the treasurer, the president. Um, so I've done all of that. And in 2001, this is exactly how I got into this in Cairo missions. In 2001, I was on the executive board of the New York Chiropractic Council when our Twin Towers got hit by some planes. And immediately therein, uh, the board and, um, and a number of uh, really good friends of mine, we uh, started mobilizing chiropractors from all over the world. Uh, particularly United States, you actually was the United States. You had to have a license to practice chiropractic to come to New York and serve. So uh, we got that bill passed within days that anybody from the 50 states with a license could come to New York and not have to have a New York license. And so we um, had chiropractors serving at ground zero for nine months in five respite centers. And my job at that time in this process was as an administrator. And uh, basically, if you wanted to serve, you came, you went through me or one of my friends and we got your we got you um, uh, credentialed. We had uh, we had took a, your picture. We had it laminated. And it was the first time that our uh, profession ever worked with the Red Cross in a professional manner. So we were working with the Red Cross. We we're at these respite centers uh, nine months. And uh, I've never seen chiropractors serve in a way before like that I saw like this. And so after those nine months were over, a friend of mine, Dr. Todd Harold and I, we went to the Dominican Republic with our wives and just to play golf. And we were at this beautiful beach, but we brought our chiropractic tables along with us. And just to adjust the hotel workers, uh, you know, all the people in the area, we frequently do that. And someone asked me if I could adjust their mom because their mom was really sick and they had a real great feeling that we could help them. So I said, of course, because that's like a divine appointment. God's calling me to serve this woman. And her place where she resided was less than a mile from this beautiful resort on the Dominican Republic. So I thought I was going to do a house call. And when I got there, um, when me and Todd got there, we put our tables out and it was uh, we couldn't go in our house because she was living in a shack. I had never seen poverty like this in my life. It was the first time I've seen that. And I've seen much worse since then. But I never saw poverty like that. And when we put our tables out in front of her little shack that she was living at, um, uh, people were watching and a lot of people said, hey, could you do that for me? And once we started doing that and people started lining up, I just said, well, this has got to be a chiropractic mission trip. I hadn't gone on mission trips with my churches before, but I had never gone on a chiropractic mission trip. And I had just missed one that I wanted to go on in 1991 with Jim Sigafoos, Jim Dubell, Selena Sigafoos, Larry Webster. Um, my child was just born when they, they were was being born. So I couldn't go on that mission trip, but I always had it in the back of my mind to do mission work. So the leadership of being in, uh, uh, a, uh, a representative of my state organization led to this whole thing. Well, it's pretty interesting because I know two of my great friends, uh, Dr. Gina Olowski from California, originally from New York, but practicing in California, and Dr. Wendy Corrin, who at the time was in Connecticut. Uh, you probably remember them because they served a lot at Ground Zero. I mean, Wendy was there every week for I don't know how many months she ended up going there. 
And that was a huge revelation for her. And obviously that became a revelation for you that brought you to that higher level of service beyond, you know, serving your practice members and in, in your community. And, and I know beyond that, like how many trips have you done now? Like over a hundred, I think, or something, right? Uh, I've done 121, 122 is coming up in June. Uh, in 122, 122 Cairo mission trips. Right. And then from that, you then, you know, you you then evolved your system to having chiropractic trips where you bring chiropractors, chiropractic students that are allowed to adjust, and you founded the Mission Life International, which now has a birthing center. Tell us more about that because there's a lot happening at the Mission Life International Center in Haiti. Well, that happened in in, um, in a way that uh, it was basically a calling from God, and in, in my view. Um, what happened was, is I started doing mission trips uh, to the Dominican Republic is the place where I've gone the most. Um, and but I started doing mission trips to different uh, islands in the Caribbean. So I was in the Bahamas. I even did one in Cuba. Uh, we did uh, Jamaica. We did uh, a number of different islands. And uh, but we'd always go back to the Dominican Republic because that was the first one I did. And then in about 2007, um, someone said, hey, can you come visit my family in Haiti because they're really sick and we know we could use chiropractic. There are no chiropractors in Haiti. So in about 2007 and 2008, I started I put I put uh, I put uh, the the uh, country of Haiti on my schedule. And uh, in 2010, we decided to go down to Port-au-Prince uh, in 2009. Rather, in 2009, we started to go into Port-au-Prince, uh, which is the capital city. And we left uh, our January 2010 mission trip. We left on January 11th, less than 20 hours from the time we left. The second worst earthquake in man's history happened in the place that I just left. Um, and, and that's the second worst earthquake in, in, in regards to people who passed away. Um, the, the earthquake actually was only like a 7.5 uh, but because of the way Port-au-Prince is built on hills and they don't have, they don't build that, nothing's built to code. They don't have people going out and making sure you're building correctly. Um, everything tumbled down. So if you happen to be inside, you ha probably die. But if you were outside, there was a chance that you lived. And it happened at a time in the day where the children were walking home from school. So uh, in 45 seconds... In 45 seconds, the whole city came tumbling down, and these children not only became orphans in 45 seconds, but they became homeless and uh, not even knowing where they were. Um, <clears throat> I had a patient of mine who was a taxi cab driver in New York City who always told me he was famous in Haiti. I never believed him, but uh, I called him up right after this, and he assured me that he was famous and he could get some things done. And we went down there. I arrived three days after the earthquake and our team of 27 chiropractors and mis Christian missionaries, 20 chiropractors and seven Christian missionaries arrived uh, six days later after the earthquake. Bradley Roush uh, raised $50,000 from his synagogue. And um, when he arrived, we basically went to the supermarkets, just bought food, water. And for the next week, we gave food, water and chiropractic adjustments to I don't know how many people, but lots of people. Um, but also my patient had this big piece of property, the Lions Club. I interviewed everyone on the plane going to the Dominican Republic because the, the airport in Haiti had been destroyed. So there was no airlines going into Haiti. We had to travel to Santo Domingo. And I interviewed everybody on that plane and said, what is your mission? And people were saying, well, our mission is to open up hospitals because the hospitals have been destroyed. We're gonna, our mission is to do amputations for people whose legs or arms are stuck in walls. And uh, the, the person who really influenced us the most was the president of the International Lions Club who told us that he was bringing 2,000 tents down um, to, to, to start at this tent city because everybody everything was destroyed. And they gave us 50 tents that we put on his property. And in that period of time, we took in over 1,000 children, chiropractors, uh, had a board, and we had 1,000 children uh, just living in these tents on my patient's property. And with Bradley Rasher's donations of $50,000, we fed children. And over the next two years, those children were um, 
adopted by Haitian people who lost their own children. Because my patient was famous, we were able to get the license to do this right away. We had a bishop on our board, one of the seven uh, missionaries who actually happened to be from Haiti himself. Um, and so that's the process that started the whole thing. And in 2012, uh, hey, and Port-au-Prince started getting uh, a little crazier. And uh, right now, you can't even go there. It's, that city is, is 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 under the rule of gangs at this present moment. But we moved about eight hours away. We moved to the border of the Dominican Republic. So we also, because I was also serving in the Dominican Republic, so we had built some infrastructure there as well. So uh, in 2012, we moved everything to, to uh, Guanament, Haiti. We purchased a piece of property. And on that property, uh, on our mission trip in 2012, I brought a pastor with me. We had a uh, we had a group of pastors. Even on this last mission trip, I just had another pastor with me. And and these are these are chiropractic mission trips. But I do have people from different churches come along with us. And um, he said, every time you come to the property, pray on the land. It's like planting seeds, and you'll you wouldn't believe what's going to sprout up. And that has happened. And over these years, we've just completed our seventh building uh, with the help of Life University, who's donated over $70,000 over these last seven years. Um, we've built seven different buildings. Uh, the first building we built was a building where our employees stayed with a big kitchen on the bottom. The second building was a building that we bought where we have uh, we have room for 35 children on one side of the building, uh, 35 boys on one side of the building, 35 girls on the next side of the building. Currently, we have about 35 altogether. Um, and then we built a big gazebo that can hold 100 people with a kitchen in it uh, so we can feed a lot of people. And then we built our birthing center, um, which is a chiropractic health center when the chiropractors are there and a full time birthing center with three midwives, currently three midwives. Sometimes we have four um, and we're birthing about 10 babies every month there. Now, the reason why this is so important is because in this area of Haiti, about one in 100 women die in childbirth because the people are living without running water in their shacks. So they're sharing outhouses. They're, they're having their babies on dirt floors. They don't have proper nutrition. Simple things that we take for granted here will allow um, allow uh, a normal birth process. And we have we built nice uh, nice rooms with beds uh, with the midwives, so they can have these these women can have their babies at our facility and we could save not only the mom's lives, but also the babies. We've also taken in some babies um, that we've adopted into the orphanage that the moms um, didn't want the babies for some reason. And, and so they asked us if we could take them. A lot of times the people can't afford to feed their own children. And so we'll take them for a period of time if our budget allows um, to take in these these children in. and in the area surrounding where we are um is there's children right at this present moment who are going to die today uh because of malnutrition because they don't have any food their stomachs are distended and when we do bring them food we have to bring them special type of peanut butter so they could digest this food so it's a it's a it's a it's a crazy place i'm an optimist um so i'm always looking for uh, uh ways of helping people and we've helped a lot um, and we can help a lot more people if we had uh, if we had more funds for certain. For certain. So that's a lot of that's a big mouthful that I just told you there. Um, but, but you know what? It's it is, uh, it, <laughs> it, it's a beautiful piece of chiropractic history. It's a beautiful piece of history from the heart and mind and soul of Dr. Peter Morgan. So I appreciate you sharing the depth of your commitment to humanity and how you choose to see opportunities that present themselves in front of you as service opportunities so that we can really live what we're called to do on this planet. You know, and at Life University, the foundational philosophy of Life University is lasting purpose to give, do, love, serve from your own abundance with no expectation of return. And I see that you've been living that yourself for now more than two decades. So I, I thank you. I thank you for all the good that you're doing. I thank you for taking care of the students and the interns that go with you on mission trips. I know that from a Life University perspective, uh, you, you know, we always have one of our clinic, our clinicians there to actually support our interns when they go and serve with you. But you've done some fantastic work. 
I know that I've had the privilege of being invited to be on your board and be a monthly contributor to Mission Life International so we can you know, raise more money to help more people. But how can people how can people help? How can they get involved? And, you know, what are, what are some opportunities that are there ready for anybody to want to help? Yeah, there's a number of ways to help. And and that is one. The one way is to do and uh, and serve. And that that is basically coming on one of the mission trips. I currently have seven mission trips a year. Um, so I'm there quite frequently. Timing is everything. So whenever a person has the opportunity to come, that that helps a lot because um, just coming with us, uh, the the funds that that are generated from coming on this mission trip, and the mission trip includes your food and your hotel, doesn't include your flight, but just coming on the mission trip provides hope for the people there. But also it provides uh, any of the money. Uh, luckily, I have a great chiropractic practice. So basically, uh, um, my chiropractic practice, which is still in existence for 40 years now, um, is uh, basically is is very economically well for me so all of the money that comes into the mission trip goes back into the mission trip and that's how we have have seven buildings so you could come with me and that in itself is 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 helping a lot then uh if you can't make it if there's something that you know you can't come down but you still want to help you can also donate at missionlifeinternational.com you can donate for our food now fifty dollars a month will save five children Five children every month will be saved because that fifty dollars a month will go for food. Five hundred dollars a month serves fifty children rice and beans. Um, so fifty dollars a month is going to save a lot of children. Uh, Seventy-five dollars a month and is going to save a mom and a baby because it costs us seventy-five dollars to take care of a mom, and that includes. When she cut, when she becomes pregnant in the first trimester, she comes and she sees the midwives. Uh, she'll get adjusted. The moms will get adjusted because I'm there seven times a year. There are no chiropractors in Haiti, uh, but there are Haitian chiropractors that have gone to Life University and and some and, and other chiropractic colleges, and they come with us. Um, but uh, that uh, first trimester, then they're seen regularly for until they have their baby. We have vitamins that uh, supplied for them. Uh, uh, really important vitamins to, for the health of the baby. And um, and then they have their baby and then they have follow-up visits and all the babies get adjusted um, and, um, and all the moms get adjusted. So uh, we've had uh, probably about 400 births in these last three years. And in that time, there's only been one C-section. So there's only been one time out of all of these births that we had to send out to an emergency, uh, luckily there's a medical center right up the block. But that is a just that statistic alone is pretty incredible. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal because you're, you're you're looking at you know, I mean such a small percentage, 025 percent of births end up in the C-section. That certainly is is not the percentage that we get right here in the United States, is it? Yeah, I'm right. I mean, around the world, um, I think that uh, you know that midwives are Haitian midwives. Uh, I, I just they're doing something right. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly what that is, but they're doing something right to have those kind of stats. Right. Uh, in the future, hopefully, we can provide some research on that as well. Well, again, thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Morgan. Thank you for all the great work that you're doing, uh, both in the Dominican Republic and in Haiti. And uh, friends, you heard it from Dr. Morgan. If you have time, talent, or treasure to assist in this initiative, you have opportunities to serve. Today's conversations on leadership powered by Life University is really about that. Talking to leaders who chose to take a step forward and then to aspire others to lead with them. On that note, Dr. Morgan, I look forward to seeing you next uh, again. Thank you. It's a blessing to know you, sir, and continue your great work. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.